Hello friends, welcome to a fresh new episode of our channel RG Innovations. If you have not subscribed already, please subscribe to our channel, click on the bell button and select all to get all future notifications of our video uploads. In today's video, we are going to discuss about DS3231 real-time clock module. In my previous videos, I have already discussed DS1302 and DS1307 real-time clock modules and today I am going to discuss about DS3231 real-time clock module. First, we are going to discuss about a little bit of theory of this module and then we will go to the practical demonstration section. If you do not want to go through the theory section, please check the chapters in the description box and skip the theory section and go to the practical section. So at first let us discuss what is DS3231 RTC module. The DS3231 is a highly accurate real-time clock module that integrates a crystal oscillator and a temperature compensated crystal oscillator which helps maintain accurate timekeeping across a range of temperatures. It is commonly used in electronics projects, microcontroller based systems like Arduino, Raspberry Pi etc. and embedded systems where keeping track of the time is crucial. Here is a brief overview of the DS3231 module and its features. Components The module typically includes the DS3231 chip, a battery holder for a CR2032 or similar coin cell battery, and sometimes additional EPROM for non-volatile storage. The module might also include breakout pins for easy connection to microcontrollers. Timekeeping the DS3231 keeps track of seconds, minutes, hours, day, date, month, and year. It also accounts for leap years, which makes it suitable for long-term timekeeping applications. Communication interface. It uses the I2C protocol to communicate with other devices. This allows for easy integration with microcontrollers and single board computers. Temperature compensation. The DS3231 has an internal temperature sensor that compensates for changes in temperature, ensuring accurate timekeeping over wide temperature range. Backup battery. The module typically has a holder for a backup battery. This allows the RTC to maintain time even when the main power source is disconnected. The backup power ensures the timekeeping continues without resetting. Alarm functionality. The DS3231 includes alarm function that allows you to generate interrupt signals based on specific time events. This can be useful for creating time-based triggers in your projects. Square wave output. The module can output a square wave signal at various frequencies, which can be useful for calibration, external timing, or clock generation in other devices. Now, DS3231 RTC chip. At the heart of the module is a low-cost, extremely accurate RTC chip from Maxim, the DS3231. It handles all timekeeping functions and communicates with the microcontroller over I2C. The DS3231 can keep track of seconds, minutes, hours, days, dates, months and years. For months with fewer than 31 days, it automatically adjusts the date at the end of the month, including leap year corrections, which is valid up to 2100. It can work in either 12-hour or 24-hour format and has an AMPM indicator. It also has two time-of-the-day alarm that can be programmed. In the picture, we can see the 3231 chip, which is the heart of the module. Now, temperature compensated crystal oscillator. Most RTC modules such as DS1307 or DS1302 require an external 32 kilohertz crystal oscillator for timekeeping. The issue with this crystal is that their oscillation frequency is affected by external temperature. This change in frequency is negligible, but it adds up. To avoid such minor crystal drifts, the DS3231 is provided by a 32 kHz temperature compensated crystal oscillator which is highly resistant to external temperature changes. The TCXO is actually composed of an integrated temperature sensor, a 32 kHz crystal oscillator, and control logic. The integrated temperature sensor compensates for frequency changes by adding or removing clock ticks, ensuring that timekeeping remains accurate. This is why the TCXO provides the most stable and accurate reference clock and keeps the RTC accurate within plus minus 2 minutes per year. Onboard 24C32 EEPROM 
The DS3231 RTC module also includes a 32 byte that is 4K into 8 bits 8024C32E PROM non volatile chip with 1 million write cycles. This chip doesn't really have anything to do with the RTC, but it can be useful for things like data logging or storing any other data that you want to be non volatile. The 24C32E PROM communicates via I2C and shares the same IC bus as the DS3231. The onboard 24C32E PROM has a fixed I2C address of 0x50. The 8024C32E PROM is rated for 1 million write cycles, so it won't wear out during normal data logging applications as long as you are not writing data every second. In the picture, we can see the 24C32E PROM chip. Battery Backup the DS3231 IC incorporates a battery input for maintaining accurate timekeeping even when the device's main power is interrupted. The built-in power sense circuit continuously monitors the status of VCC to detect power failures and automatically switches to the backup supply. This means that even in the event of power outage, the IC can still keep time. For backup power, the bottom of the board houses a battery holder for a 20mm 3V lithium coin cell. A fully charged 220mAh coin cell battery and keep the chip current draw to a minimum of 3 microampere. The battery should be able to power the RTC for at least 8 years without the need for an external power supply. Now there is a bit of warning or caution. These modules normally come with a 200 ohms resistance sold next to the 1N4148 diode as you can see in the image. This is the 200 ohms resistance. The resistor and diode form a simple charging circuit designed for use with LIR2030 rechargeable batteries. Be aware that some DS3231 modules come with a non-rechargeable CR2032 battery, usually which is available in the market and we use with this module. If this is the case, you must remove the resistor because attempting to charge a non-rechargeable battery can cause damage to the module. Now, the I2C interface. The module has a simple I2C interface that takes up two addresses. The DS3231S RTC chip's fixed I2C address which is 0x68 and the EEPROM's default I2C address which is 0x57. It can be changed through the address range of 0x50 to 0x57. If you are using multiple memory devices on the same I2C bus, you may need to set a different I2C address for EEPROM so that it does not conflict with another I2C device. Device. To accomplish this, the module has three solder jumpers A0, A1 and A2. In the module, this is the solder jumper. Shorting a jumper with a blob of solder sets the address. Usually, if we do not have much I2C devices, we do not make any changes to this section. So I am not going into much detail about this. If you want to learn about this, please feel free to ask me in the comment. I will definitely make another video about this. The I2C SDA and SCL signals as well as power and ground are broken out to one side of the module to allow these signals to be looped out to another module. This is broken into two sides so that we can give one side to the microcontroller and another side we can daisy chain with another device. To enable communication, both the SDA and SCL lines have 4.7K pull-up resistors. Enough of theory, now let us look at the module spin-out diagram. This module is well marked. If we look at the left side first, the first pin is 32K. This 32K pin outputs a stable temperature compensated and accurate reference clock. Then the second pin is SQW which can generate a square wave output at either 1Hz, 4kHz, 8kHz or 32kHz. Then the SCL pin which is the serial clock. Then the SDA pin which is the serial data pin of the I2C interface. Then the VCC is a power to the module you can connect it to a 3.3 .3 to a 5 volt power supply then the gnd pin which is the ground pin and then at the right side also we can see the scl sda vcc and ground pin which is parallel with this section so that we can connect another i2 device from this module now we will look at the circuit diagram of an arduino and the ds3231 rtc module the circuit is very simple we give 5 volt power supply from the 5 volt pin of the Arduino to the VCC pin and to the ground pin from here this ground pin to this ground pin SCL pin to the analog pin 5 of the Arduino which is the SCL pin of the Arduino and the SDA pin to the analog input pin 4 which is the SDA pin of the Arduino. So the connection is very simple. Now we will look at the sketch and then we will see the practical demonstration. 
Here is the Arduino sketch for displaying the time and date into the serial monitor. So first we have included a library which is bonzegate ds3231.h. I have given this library for download in the description section so you can download it and install it from there. Then we have declared an object of bonzegate ds3231 type and we have mentioned the i2c address of the module. Then in the setup section we have initiated the serial communication, then initiated the r2c object, then we have set the date format. Then we have set AM PM, 0 for AM, 1 for PM. Then we have set the time. We have given an initial time for the module. And then we have given an initial date of the module. So while uploading, we will adjust this as per the system date and time. Then in the loop section, we have checked if the RTC can provide the time. So if this is true, then we have printed the date and time into the serial monitor. And then the AM PM value after the time delay one second and repeat the process and here is a simple function of converting a number a single digit number to two digit with a leading zero so if the date and time is of single digit it will convert it to two digit so that it looks good in a in the time and date format so the program is this simple now we will connect the arduino and we will upload the sketch into the arduino and see the output so here we have built the circuit this is the arduino nano in the circuit diagram we have shown arduino uno but here we are using an arduino nano and this is the DS3231 module. Let me show you a little closer. This is the module. We have installed a battery at the back side. Now we will connect it with the computer and we will upload the sketch. So we are connecting it with the computer. You see it has got power. This module also has got power. Now this is our sketch. This is the initial time and this is the initial date we are setting. Now since uh, this initial date and time is in the setup section, every time the Arduino restarts or it is reset, this date and time will be started from the setup point. So after uploading this sketch one time, we will comment out this section and we will re-upload the sketch again so that the date and time is not restarted every time the module is reset. So let's upload it for the first time done uploading now we will comment this out and we will upload it one more time this is done let's see in the serial monitor you can see the date and time is counting now let's bring this to half and half display now what happens if we remove the power from the Arduino? We have removed the power. You can see it's showing not connected. Select a board and port to connect automatically. And the time stopped here at 12.30 am. So we are reconnecting it. You can see it had started with the exact time that has elapsed. So this module runs in the backup power from the battery. So this was the demonstration of using the DS3231 module with serial monitor. Now our next example will be how to, we can use the DS3231 module with the I2C LCD module so that we can display the date and time on the LCD, a 16 by 2 LCD. So for that, first let us see the circuit diagram. When we are connecting an I2C enabled LCD display with the Arduino along with the RTC DS3231, it shares the same bus. So we are giving 5 volt to the power rail of the breadboard and here we have connected the VCC of the RTC and VCC of the LCD display. Then in the ground pin, we have connected the ground of the RTC and ground of the LCD and then the SCL of both the modules to the analog pin 5 of the Arduino and the SDA pin of both the modules to the analog pin 4 of the Arduino. Here also connection is very simple. Now we will look at the Arduino sketch and then we will upload it and see the practical demonstration. Here is the sketch for displaying the time and date into the LCD module. For that, we have taken first the library Bonzegate DS3231, which is the main RTC module library. And then we have taken another library, which is Liquid Crystal I2C. This one is for the I2C module of the LCD display. And another is Wire.h. 
First, we have declared an object of Bonzegi DS3231 type. The name is RTC and this is the I2C address which is 0x68. And then we have declared another object of liquid crystal type where this is the I2C address and this is the size of the LCD 16 by 2. If 0x3f is not working with your I2C module, you can use the address 0x27 as the I2C address of your LCD module. Then in the setup section, we have declared two variables to use in the code. Then we have initiated the serial communication. Then we have initiated the RTC communication. Use the format of the time, which is 12 hours. Then we have set the AM PM format. Then the initial time, initial date. Then we have initiated the wire communication and then and then we have begun the wire communication for checking if the LCD module exists. So if the LCD module exists, then we will print LCD found and if it does not, then we will print LCD not found. If the LCD is found, then we will initialize the LCD object. Then in the loop section, we will print the time and data into the LCD. This section is very easy to understand. If you just go through once, you can understand. So I'm not going into much detail about this. Then we will display the AM or PM. And then this function you already know, it's a two digit conversion of a single digit number with a leading zero. So this is the code. It is very easy to understand. We have also commented the required section. Now the Arduino is already connected with the computer and all the modules are also connected. Let's have a look on that. And then we will upload the sketch into the Arduino. Then we will execute the code and see the output. So this is the circuit we have built. We have connected the LCD module. It's an I2C connected LCD module. So it only takes four wires to connect with the Arduino, two for the power supply and two for the data line. Now we will upload the sketch into the Arduino and we will see what displays in the LCD module. So let's move on to the screen. For the first time, we will upload the sketch with this date and time. But again, we will comment this section out and then we will re-upload the sketch. So first we are uploading this. Let's uh, make the screen half and half. Now I'm uploading the sketch. You can see as soon as the code uploads here, the time and date will be displayed. The date and time started. Now we will comment out these two section, these two lines. We have shown in the previous example that if we do not comment this out, it will restart the time from the initiation point. I resetted the Arduino. It will start from the same time that is given in the sketch. Here in the sketch, it starts from this time. Even every time the power is restarted or the Arduino is reset, it will start from this time. So we need to comment these two lines out and re-upload the sketch. Then it will continue the actual time. It will not reset the time to the initial point. Going to full setup. Now you see, even if I remove the power and reconnect, it will keep counting the original date and time. So that is the demonstration of DS3231 module. Today, I only showed how to set the date and time into the module and how to retrieve the date and time from the module. Two things I did not discuss about the module. One is how to use the EEPROM in this module and how to change the I2C addresses. These three points are for there to change the I2C addresses. I did not show these two things. If you want to know more about these two things also, please ask me in the comments. I'll definitely make a video and I'll share it with you. In my next video, I'll make a real clock with this module, this DS3231 module with alarm functions and we will see a practical demonstration of that. So today I'm concluding here. If you have any question or any query, please feel free to ask me in the comments. I'll definitely try to answer all your queries or questions. If you have any suggestion also, let me know that also in the comments. So concluding here today, we will meet again in a new video. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Have a nice time. Thank you for watching.